Hey, good afternoon, my friends. If you've been watching the past couple of days, I really appreciate you tuning in. I'm pretty stoked today. I've had a pretty good day so far. Listen to some greatest showmen, which uh, always, you know, starts off for a good day. Uh, had um, let's see what else has happened good so far today. Oh, it's my daughter's birthday, and we got some other good things going on. And specifically today, I want to talk to you about money and business, and some of the beliefs that I have learned over my two decades in business, and things I want to pass on to you to help you run a better business. But before we get to that, let's run our really cool intro. Sweet, okay, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time, this is just for you. You've never seen me before. You have no idea who I am. You just happen to stumble upon a random Facebook page or you were recommended by a friend. My name is Patrick Almond. Uh, I run a company called Focus Digital Marketing and Stop Doing Nothing in Oklahoma City. And we provide business and all kinds of personal development coaching, but not the regular kind of coaching. The kind of coaching where, you know, I'm somewhat aggressive. I'm going to kick you in the ass. I'm not going to let you uh, pander or make excuses for things. I want to see you live big. I've been in business since 1998, I believe, and I've learned a lot of things and I wanna share them with you and I don't want you to waste any single minute or hour on this planet. So that's 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 who I am in a nutshell. No joke intended with the almond, the chocolate covered almond. I've heard them all over the past several decades, so feel free to make any jokes there. If you are watching live, uh, do me a favor, chime in with a comment down there as to how you found us and where you are listening from or watching from. Uh, today, like I said, things have started off pretty good so far in their marketing office. Got some new client work going on, cranking out some Facebook ads for some clients to help them do amazing things and spread their message. I listened to The Greatest Showman, the entire soundtrack. That's my morning shower habit. For those of you who have, are, are big shower singers like I am, I am great. I'm a great, great singer in the shower. And I have a pattern on days that I'm going to want to be in a really good mood. I listen to The Greatest Showman, and I know I have to be out of the shower by a certain point in a certain song. And then I continue on, obviously, with the rest of it after I'm out of the shower. But I listen to it, and that always puts me in a great mood. Uh, it's November 19th, for those of you that are watching this later. So it's November 19th today, which means it's my daughter's birthday. So that means I, well, not I, my wife, birthed a daughter, you know, several decades ago. And she is traveling around the world and doing amazing things in marketing just like we are here. She does concert promotion and outdoor event marketing and music festival marketing. So she's doing great things there. So all in all, it's a great day here. Hope you're having a great day there. Today I'm going to talk to you about money. We love to hate to talk about money. We love to basically um, kind of follow our parents' rules and think that talking about money is taboo. Talking about salaries is taboo. Talking about taxes and what I make and what you make and what he makes and what she makes. We tend to think that all of that stuff is taboo. Uh, and today we're gonna focus more on the business side. So if you're someone who has, watches the page for personal development, motivation, things like that, this stuff is gonna help you also. But this is geared a little bit more towards entrepreneurs or people that want to be entrepreneurs or people that um, are just starting their entrepreneurial journey or even those who have been in business uh, for a while. So um, get ready to take really good notes on this because I already did for you. And by the way, uh, if you are in business, I cannot emphasize enough, you know, really good tools. And I prep for you on this webinar today. I prep for you by using my iPad with the built-in notes software and an Apple pen. Uh, I'm a huge Apple fan uh, and I love every tool they make. And you buy this for what, $99, I think, or $129 and you use the built-in notes application. I can just sit there and basically do my show planning notes for the couple of hours ahead of me getting on the show right there. So if you're looking for a really cool note-taking platform, that's it right there. Not terribly expensive. You, you don't need a special app. You use the Notes app that comes with your uh, iPad, your phone, and of course it syncs up to all of your Apple stuff. Okay, let's talk about money today. I want to talk about, um, I came up with, uh, over the past couple of hours, I came up with four money beliefs that I want to discuss with you, and I would like your comments also, if you are watching live, as to how... Um, what your thoughts are, you know, on these money topics here. Um, so there's four of them here. The first one here that always comes to mind, I had this discussion with somebody else yesterday in a coffee shop, is the concept of what you should be charging. 
And this is a really big one for people that are going into business for the very first time. What should I be charging per hour? What should I be charging for a consulting session? What should I be charging to you know, do plumbing work or sell this or buy this or consult on this? I can't answer what you should be charging. However, I can tell you almost everybody that comes to us for help that enrolls inside of a coaching program that I work with one-on-one -on -one is not charging enough. That is one of the biggest issues I see in the world of people and what they want to charge is they are not charging enough. Now, I'm not talking about your hourly charges. I'm actually going to get to that later in the show. I'm talking about the fact that um, people think that they are, when they first uh, go into business, they think they have the imposter syndrome. They think that, you know, I, I, I'm only starting off. I can't charge what I see the other guy charge. I can't charge what I see the big guru charge. You know, I can't charge $500 an hour or $100 an hour. I have to start off lower. I got to maybe do $10 an hour. I'd be just really happy with $10 an hour. There are a couple of problems with this. Um, one, it's really going to be hard for you to grow uh, and do massive things when you are a low ball charger. If you ever wonder about this, um, the, 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 reali the realism of, of what you are making and what you put in the bank can really be found if you do some financial projections and you look at what you're going to have to pay in equipment costs, in uh, taxes, in your salary, maybe a salary to an assistant. Uh, if you want to do bigger things, if you want to grow, do yourself a favor sometime and get down with a spreadsheet and just start putting in, oh, you know, I want to charge $17 an hour and I'm going to work, you know, eight hours a day and that's going to be 40 hours a week and that's going to be this per month and this per quarter and this per year and then take out your taxes. Take out not only your taxes, the, the, the you know, both halves of the taxes because when you work for yourself, you have to do that. You have to do both halves of the taxes and then... Add in all of your other expenses, your monthly expenses that get charged on your credit cards. Don't forget to count the interest. And then just keep adding in all the possible things you have to pay for when it comes to running a business. And then see what you are left with. And you will find out that if you have a really low number in mind, or if you have that startup mindset, that startup mentality, that you don't have very much money left. And if at the end of a year in business, you don't have very much money left, you really can't do anything new or different in your second year of business, in your third year of business. You can't hire more people. You can't get better equipment. You can't expand. You can't grow. You can't travel. So that's one reason why um, I really believe people don't charge enough. Another one is the perception of value. And this is something I've heard from people so, so much smarter than me time and time again is the perception of value based on uh, based on what you are charging. It's, it's really weird how the human psychology works, the fact that we, we look at what someone charges and we, we basically say, oh, they must be really good, or maybe they aren't that good based on, uh, you know, based on what they're charging. You're gonna look at a plumber that charges you know, $10, $20 an hour, and you're going to think, huh, that's an okay plumber, but you're, 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 let's say you're comparison shopping with plumbers and all of a sudden you run into another plumber that charges $30 an hour and you run into another plumber that charges $40 or $50 an hour. What you will do implicitly, what you will do is you will think those higher, um, those higher charged, um, I, um, what was I going to say? Those higher charged plumbers, you are going to think those plumbers are better. It's just really weird how that works out. And by the way, all these lessons I'm sharing with you are things that I had to go through myself. So trust me, I'm, I'm definitely down with, I, I know how this has definitely happened. Sorry, I'm making sure we can, got lots of people watching this here. Um, I gotta share it all over the place because that's just what you do in Facebook world is you share stuff all over the place. Uh, so people will implicitly place a value on the amount of money you charge. If you charge more, people will think you're gonna be worth more. Not only that, when you start charging more, when someone chooses to invest with your business, what you are going to learn and what they are going to learn, specifically what you are going to learn, is people that charge more aren't as much of a pain in the ass, they are so, so much easier to work with, and they just want results. When you start charging low ball prices, and you start charging really low end things, and doing things for the bare minimum, you will get people that want to nitpick on every little thing that you do. They, uh, let's, let's, you know, the other half of my company does, does advertising in, in Facebook. So 
Um, if you get someone that really low ball charges you, what you're going to get is you're going to get someone who's going to want to sit over your shoulder and, you know, watch you type things. And why'd you do it this way? And I, no, don't do it that way. I want it done this way. Remember, you have to remind people that they're coming to you for expertise. So at a certain level, there has to be some kind of abstraction or some kind of belief that, you know what, you know, you absolutely know what you're doing and you don't need someone sitting on your shoulder. But that's what you get with the low end people. You get people who just want to nitpick and everything. Not only that, people that are very at the low end of the pricing spectrum or the value spectrum tend to be um, more afraid of their money. Uh, you know, if I have someone that wants that I need to want to charge uh, that says, I can only afford $100 a month for your Facebook services, Patrick. Um, they're going to be, every single month, they're going to be like, well, uh, do I really need to spend this $100? Uh, they're going to be really paranoid about it, and they're going to be the ones that are going to back out the fastest also whenever they have money issues or whenever they don't, they don't see results. The higher-end people, my clients, when I charge more, they are much more willing to say, Patrick, please just take care of this. Make this happen. Make it work. Show me the results. I don't want to know what you know, Patrick. You got to remember when you're being, you know, paid for an hourly retainer. Oftentimes, you're not being paid to teach them how to do it. You're being paid to just make it get done. You know what? If you're paying good for a roofer, you're not going to hop up there on the roof and basically sit over the roofer's shoulders and watch him bang in the nails and say, "No, that's not the way you should bang in nails." Same goes true if you're talking to a dentist or a doctor or other people or your car mechanic. Can you imagine what your car mechanic would do if you find a low ball car mechanic and you just kind of sit over their shoulder and tell them how to turn the wrenches and fill the fluids and things like that? Nuh-uh, nuh-uh. And again, these are mistakes I've made over my decades of business. So, uh, you know, kind of a quick recap. You're not charging enough um, and with the results of that are you are ending up with not very much net money at the end of the year. People are not seeing your value and it doesn't allow you to grow and expand your business when you are not charging enough. So please do me a favor. If you feel like this is you, if you feel like you're an imposter and that you need to be charging more, I challenge you. I challenge you. I dare you. Do me a favor. I absolutely dare you to double your prices. Don't, and don't wait for, oh, January 2020, I'm going to double my prices. No, double your damn prices now. If you're someone who really feels that you want to be making more money and you're, you're running a business and you're just not getting a lot out of it and you don't feel like you have any money left at the end of the month, double your prices. I dare you. As a matter of fact, double your prices. And if you choose to do that, text me. Text me 405-217-4752. That's our business text number 405-217-4752. Can I even put a comment in the video for that? Dang it, I can't do that. I'm sorry about that. You know what? I will do that real quick for you. Hold on. We will add uh, a text number on the screen here, 405-217-4752. You gotta love technology. So we're gonna add that real quick. Let's move that down there out of the way because that looks kind of ridiculous up there. So that's my actual uh, business text number. We'll put it over here. Uh, that's my actual business text number. And if you do something dramatic in your pricing before the end of 2020, uh, somehow prove it to me. Show me an invoice. Show me an old invoice. Show me a new invoice. Show me something cool like that and I will mail you one of these shirts. Stop doing nothing there. And on the back, it should say, today is better than yesterday. So that's my challenge to you. And I just completely made that up. But I love giving away shirts and I love seeing people do amazing things in their business. So that was my first point right there is my first money tidbit, what I've learned from, from working with. And again, if you're watching live, do me a favor and comment down below as to where you're listening from and whether or not you're on your phone or your computer also. Um, the, okay, this one kind of the second one that I wrote out for you today as I was planning kind of goes back from the first one a little bit is you really cannot help a lot of people if you are broke. Somebody said, um, I was out at coffee somewhere, uh, somewhere yesterday and someone said there is no honor in being poor. There is no honor in being broke. Now, this phrase is not meant to dismiss or put down people that don't have a lot of money. Please do not take that way. Take it that way. But if you are someone who's in business and you came to provide value for people in the world, you cannot do it very well if you are broke. You cannot do it very well if you don't have any money left to either give to people or to build things or to bring value into other people's lives. And that's very important to me because... Um, I don't, I am not in business for the money. 
I am in business for the value that I bring. It just so happens that I can bring more value. I can touch and reach out to more people with the more money I have. The more money buys me help. It buys me hours. It buys me travel time to go help other people. It allows me to do marketing to go help other people. So I am never ashamed of charging a premium price because all I'm going to do is take that money, turn it around and invest it in a way for me to reach out to other people. Uh, you know what, I am not, I mean, I like, I like a decent car, but if you know me and my cars, you know, I buy halfway decent uh, used cars and just drive them into the ground. I do not go out and take my business money and uh, I'm gonna take the, no the cell number the off of the screen here. There we go, that's cool. Gosh, I love technology. Um, I do not take the money that people make me and go out and I you know, buy BMWs and Maseratis and Mercedes brand new off the lot. I like a good car, but I like a good valuable car. I like a good bargain car, I guess is what I should say. So um, I am not that kind of person that's trying to make millions of dollars every single month. Will it happen? Possibly if I do my job well enough, but I, don't, I am not in it to basically hoard the money. Scrooge McDuck, for those of you that are a little bit more of my generation, remember Scrooge McDuck? Scrooge McDuck had that big building full of money, he would just swim in it. That's not what I'm looking to do. I don't wanna hoard the money, I wanna spend it to reach more people. So if you are not charging enough, uh, then you cannot reach more people. And I, like I said, there is no honor in being broke. So that's the second one for that, and realize how much the first, how much time the first one would take up. The third one, um, that I want to talk to you about when it comes to money, uh, and this is another mindset thing you have to realize, uh, and again, a mindset thing that took me to realize, is if you are someone who uh, feels like charging a particular service fee or an hourly fee, again, I'm gonna get into that, um, you have to remember that people, um, oftentimes when I tell people that I charge X per hour, they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe people will pay that per hour, how good are you? You know, how kind of, what kind of PhD do you have to where, and training do you have to where you can charge that per hour? I could never charge what you charge per hour, Patrick. And first of all, of course you could. We know you could. But you have to remember that people are paying for your years of experience. They are not paying for your physical hours of time. And what I mean is, I'm gonna use an example of, of a writer, you know, a newspaper writer. If someone hires an experienced journalist to help them write a story, you may think that, oh, you know what, writers, you know, halfway decent writers are making X amount per, per, per hour, so if I hire a writer who has decades of experience, they should be able to just charge me the same amount. And all of a sudden that writer comes in and they charge you 10 times the amount that you're expecting. And you're like, whoa, 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 I can go up get, and get any writer off the street for X dollars. I mean, the average price for your field is X dollars. And the person, the smart person is gonna say, well, you know what, that's true. That is the average price for someone who wants to work hourly and for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience. However, Mr. Client, the reason I'm charging this is because number one, the amount of time it's going to take is going to be shorter because I've got three decades of writing experience. I've been doing this for a while, which means not only are you going to get it done faster, it's going to be a better product. So yes, you can go hire an entry level copywriter or someone who's in college as a journalism major and, and they're gonna charge you X, but you know what? You, first of all, you're gonna go round and round with them on several iterations and it still may not be right. And second of all, they are, well, that's, that's, I guess that was both of them. You're gonna go round and round with them on iterations and it still may not be right and it may actually end up costing you more. So when you were thinking about the value you bring Think about how many years you've spent what you're doing. Whether you're a barber or a stylist or a mechanic or a marketer like me, or someone who's been in the bodybuilding or fitness for decades, think about all that time over the years you've spent learning your craft. That's what people are paying for. People are not paying just for an hourly low-end person to come in and bang their head on the keyboard, or an hourly low-end gym trainer to just basically show them how to do push-ups. No, you are not just someone who's gonna show them how to do push-ups if you're a trainer. You're someone that knows the body from head to toe, you know the right way to do push-ups, you know the wrong way to do push-ups, and what you really know, which is really good for someone like me, a big guy, is you know that there are, all, there are other exercises you can do if I can't do a push-up, there are other exercises I can do to basically accomplish the same thing if someone cannot do a push-up. So when people are coming to you you, they, they are, again, they're not paying for just an hour of your time. They're paying for the decades of the things that you've learned. So do me a favor uh, and remember that. 
And the way you can also kind of change your psychology on this is when people ask how much you cost, or and this is this primarily applies to the written word, don't use the word cost or price when talking about what you charge. Use the term investment. And I know some of you out there that have more experience than me are saying, preach, Patrick, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly it. You don't want to talk about the cost of what you do or the cost of using you or the price of using you. It's an investment. When someone comes to my agency and they want us to do Facebook advertising, they're going to get a return on that money. They are investing in their business. I'm not, you know, some kind of sinkhole of money that they're, it's going to drain and they're never going to see again. They are investing in me with their business because I'm going to help them improve their business via coaching, via advertising, via building advertising assets. And any good investment should expect to get a return. So if you come to me and I charge you $5,000 for something, uh, you know what, if you follow my word, you should very easily be able to get twenty dollars to $30,000 of value out of this, if not $100,000. So, you know, again, people get afraid of investing in their business, but they, they don't they don't look at the long term. They don't look at the vision. They don't look at the return, the ROI. If you're going to spend a dollar, it's you're not spending the dollar. You're investing the dollar so you can get $10, $20, $30 back. So please stop using the words price and cost and start using the words investment. And let's move on to the last one here. Don't charge hourly. Don't, do not, not ever, ever, ever charge hourly. And I'm speaking primarily to the service providers out there. People who typically in their typical industry, um, you know what, they will charge, they will charge hourly. And the problem with that is again, people want to buy micro amounts of your time. They don't want to buy your experience. They don't want to buy your knowledge. So for example, uh, in, in my case, the lowest amount that you can invest with, with me in my business is a bundle of hours. And I don't even call it hourly. I'm like, here's a, here's a consulting bundle. Uh, you know what? The bundle usually takes two hours, but I do not call it hourly consulting. Sometimes when I, I quote people that investment, they're like, oh, can I just divide that in half and, and pay just hourly? I'm like, no, it's, it's all or none. It's a consulting bundle. There's some other challenges also when you are charging hourly is that people want to kind of piecemeal buy here and there. And it doesn't allow you to plan your business better. It doesn't allow you to basically allocate time on your calendar because you have no idea if someone's going to want an hour of your time or 10 hours of your time. But if you sell in bundles and consulting bundles or you just sell in packages of some sort, you can do a lot better financial planning. And you can also do stuff like have different tiers. You know, here's my tier one consulting bundle. Here's my tier two consulting bundle. Here's my tier one monthly retainer. Here's my tier two monthly retainer. You can do all kinds of cool things with, with expanding and growing your business and scaling your business if you stop charging hourly. Scaling, there's the magic word right there. You know what you can't do when you're charging hourly? Is you cannot scale your business. If you are charging hourly for your particular time and you want to scale your business, you basically, you can only max out at so many hours per day. And if you don't, if you're not charging the premium, like we talked about earlier, you're not going to have any profit on top of that to basically get to a second or a third person. However, when you charge in consulting bundles, it really doesn't matter how long it takes for you to solve something. Uh, it could take you 50 minutes. It could take you 15 hours. It doesn't really matter. They're paying for value and they're paying for a solution. They are not paying for your hourly time. So do me a favor, just stop charging hourly. Don't make me reach through the camera and, and you know slap you around and get you to do this. Just start doing it on your own. So as a quick recap, money tips for today and for my entrepreneur friends. Number one, you're likely not charging enough. Uh, double what you're charging and if you do happen to double what you're charging, text me at the number on the screen right there, 405-217-4752. Prove it to me, you have to prove it. I'm not gonna reveal your numbers or your name, Just Text me an image of things and I will mail you a Stop Doing Nothing shirt to, to your address wherever you are in the United States. We could probably do it overseas, but that would cost me a little bit more. But I will gladly mail you a free shirt anywhere in the United States if you prove to me that, you know, in November of 2019 or October of 2019, uh, you were charging X and in November and December, you started charging X times two, X times three. Do me a favor, please hop on that as soon as possible. You can't help people if you're broke and there is no honor in being broke. Again, this is not meant to uh, diss people who are having uh, challenges with their income or broke people or homeless people. It's not remotely related to that. What I'm thinking is 
What this refers to is people that think they should be charging the absolute lowest price for something because it makes them feel humble. It makes them feel that um, that, that is the best thing they could possibly do is, is be the cheapest person on, on the cheapest person on the market. You know what's a suicide wish in business? A business death wish is someone that says, I want to charge the least amount of something and have the best product. I want to have the best product on the, I want to have the best product on the market, the best service on the market, and I want to be the cheapest out there. If you ever hear somebody say that, or if you have somebody who wants to partner up with you in business and they say that, run the F away fast. You know what? You can be the cheapest on the market and not the best, or you can be the best on the market and not the cheapest. But do not ever, ever try to be the best on the market and the cheapest. It's a business death wish. Uh, people are not paying for hours. Remember, they're paying for consulting bundles. They're paying for big chunks of your time. They're not paying for, for your hourly stuff because you don't want to charge hourly right there. And also people are paying for your experience. That's one thing I want to say. They're not paying for your hourly rote time right now. They're paying for your experience, which gets me back to the last one. Do not ever charge hourly. You want to be charging by consulting bundles, by larger packages. It's going to allow you more flexibility, more tiers, allow you to scale your business, and allow you to do really cool things. If you've got any other financial tips, do me a favor and drop them in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear them because I am not the end-all, be-all of financial knowledge. And there are people much, much smarter than me out there. Uh, as always, do me a favor, uh, follow the Stop Doing Nothing fan page. We have a Stop Doing Nothing podcast on iTunes. Subscribe and rate that if you would. We have a Stop Doing Nothing YouTube channel. Just help me out a little bit on social media and share uh, and like and follow on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. You know all the common places. Just help me out by expanding my audience. If you're not gonna, if you can't hire us right now or retain us for a consulting bundle, at least help us out on social media and spread the word for us. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're on the podcast, I appreciate you guys listening. Oh, by the way, on the podcast, I want to point out, not only are we on Spotify, we are also on iTunes. We are also on iHeartRadio. I think we're also on Radio.com. So we're several places. So it's not just iTunes. You can listen to us all over the place. As a matter of fact, you can even listen to us on Alexa. So let's try this out real quick. Hey, Alexa. Play Stop Doing Nothing podcast. Here's Stop Doing Nothing High Achiever radio show. Continue. Resuming SDN 072. This is when the magic happens. Alexa, stop. Okay, see? Right there. So via TuneIn, we are also on Alexa. So you can ask your Alexa to play the Stop Doing Nothing podcast. Hey, everybody. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we will see you tomorrow. Take care.